Hey family, thank you all so much for tuning in. I pray you're well. I'm excited to see you guys and to share this word with y'all. And I have a song today. Actually, I have two songs because one just came to me as I was going through my notes. And so I'll sing that second song later. But the Lord woke me up with a song, which is the basis of this word as well. He also gave me a vision. And so I want to share that with you all to just confirm what you already know in your spirit and what God is doing. So Father, I thank you for this word. I ask that it be none of me and all of you to give me a fresher revelation as I release it to your people. Let it be seed planted and watered in their hearts, minds, and spirits, Lord God, that you may give the increase to it in due season in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And so last week I was speaking about what God was showing me about standing still and seeing the salvation of the Lord, watching him deal with your enemies in the supernatural as you do what you need to do in the natural to keep moving along, to keep chugging forward towards your promised land, right? And so I share with you guys that God was highlighting the 17th and that holiday Ashura, which symbolizes the parting of the Red Sea and, and the Lord liberating the Israelites out of Egyptian captivity. And so as yesterday came, yesterday was the 17th, I just felt peace in my spirit. Even though I was kind of busy doing a few things, I still felt a stillness, which I know is the peace of God that surpasses all understanding in the day or throughout the day yesterday. And so as the Lord was waking me up this morning, I began to hear a song blasting in my spirit. The song is called It's Working by William Murphy. And so singers get ready. This is what I heard. This is my season. For grace, for favor, this is my season to reap what I have sown. And so that was it. And then the Lord showed me a vision after that. And so before I get into the vision, this is what I sensed the Lord was doing yesterday by the Spirit. And drop it in the comments if you felt that same sense of peace that I felt yesterday that surpassed all understanding, that stillness, like that calmness, right? Just drop it in the comments if you felt that. But I believe the Lord was dealing with our enemies, like I was speaking about last week, where I read the scripture that said that we won't have to ever deal with those enemies again, those giants again, like whatever it has been that has been causing you the greatest resistance, the greatest opposition in advancing into your purpose, in advancing the kingdom of God, in advancing your ministry, your business, whatever it's been. I feel that God has dealt with that. And as he woke me up with that, with that song, that was just a confirmation for me. And I know it is for many of you that this is your season now. It is time for you to walk into your promised land. Drop it in the comments. Leave some fire emojis, some hearts, whatever you want to do. But let me know this is resonating with you. And so what God is saying is that you're going to be able to now move forward and do what he has gifted and talented you to do effortlessly. Like you're not going to have that contention, right? And so after the song, I saw a vision, a quick vision. So I'm still like laying down, like my body is not up, but I'm waking up. Okay. And so the Lord showed me a quick vision of a city. And I was kind of like at the border of the city. There were green pastures in front of me. I could see like the downtown part of the city, like all the big buildings. And then I knew there were other buildings around. Okay. It was also a hot day outside. And I knew this because I could see like the haze coming up off of the the ground so to speak and so you know how it's so hot outside it looks like little wavy lines like that's what i saw right and so as i look this up this haze or these wavy lines is what is called a heat shimmer that we see when it's hot outside so it can also be called a mirage now before i get into that i want to point out that this city was already established okay it was built up all right and so a mirage is often thought to be something that is unattainable or an illusion, right? And so the work that God has done spiritually in you and in the atmosphere has taken you from believing the bad report of the spies, believing the bad report of the naysayers, or just your fear or whatever it's been, right? He's taking you from that 
to aligning with his will, aligning with his promise, aligning with him being who he is, which is not a man that he shall lie. Thank you, Lord. And so this is what the Lord was showing me and why he highlighted this haze or mirage. The word mirage also means to look at, to wonder at, to admire a miracle or a marvel, like to marvel at something, to be astonished by it, right? Um, the word mirage comes from the French verb mirror, which is also related to the English word mirror, okay? My God, help me, Holy Spirit. So God wants you to know that what he has prophesied over your life is true, that it is not a mirage, that you will possess the land. And then I heard, it won't fail, you won't fail, take the land. So receive that word. You are not going to fail. What God has given you, that vision that you've been holding on to, some of you for years, right? What God is giving you. The time is now. And he's saying, go forward, possess the land. You're not going to fail. Everything is already set up for you. Remember, the city was established in the vision. And so I'm going to go to Deuteronomy chapter six. We're about to sit up under this word, y'all. Deuteronomy six, verse 10, it says, when the Lord your God, who by dosaya, thank you, Jesus. Woo. I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy for me. God is so good. Like, y'all, okay. Who my God. Just drop some fire emojis in the comments if you are feeling the Lord, the Holy Spirit just moving right now, just confirming this word. Your spirit is bearing witness with this word because the Holy Spirit only speaks what is on the Father's heart. Thank you, Lord. Let me start over. When the Lord your God brings you into the land he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So now, let me just say this. You are in covenant with God, which qualifies you for the Abrahamic blessing. Genesis 12, 1 through 3, right? He'll make your name great. He will bless those who bless you. He will curse those who curse you. So go back and study that out to get it into your spirit so that you know what belongs to you, right? Through the covenant. And so when he gives you the land he swore to give your ancestors, a land large, flourishing with cities that you did not build, houses filled with all kinds of good things you did not provide, wells you did not dig, and vineyards and olive groves you did not plant. I'm going to stop right there. So you are inheriting the rest of God, right? So God has freed you from whatever you had been spiritually bound to whatever you have been enslaved to that was outside of his will, whatever you were doing to obtain whatever it is that you wanted in your life that was outside of the will of God that caused you to toil. It caused you to step out of character. It caused you to just wander in the wilderness of your life. This is a toxic relationship. This is toxic work environments. Whatever it's been, addiction, sin, whatever it's been, you are free now. And so God is saying, now that you have aligned yourself to the Abrahamic covenant, now that you have aligned yourself to the will of God, he can, okay, he can finally perform what it is he's been wanting to do for you this entire time, but you kept getting in his way, trying to do it your way because you didn't know any better, right? The word of God says that my people perish because of the lack of knowledge, right? And so some of you just led astray by strong delusion. Some of you, the veils or the scales just over your eyes, the mirages, right? Come on. Yes. The, the things that seem to be unattainable, whatever it's been, God is saying all that is clear now. And so as you walk into these inheritances, you're not going to have to toil this flourishing city that you did not build. I just see that now. Those of you who are stepping into your business is right. Your clients are already there. The customers are already there. God is just saying, trust me, keep moving forward. Yes, he's trying to get you to believe the good report. You got to leave the bad report 
on the other side of the Red Sea. Come on, somebody. He's saying, I've already dealt with all of that. You have to believe what I'm showing you to do. Like, keep stepping forward. Come on, Holy Spirit. And so wells you did not dig and vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. So this is just all again, establishment. Everything is established for you. The providence of God, the provision of God. So he's saying it's already there. And when you eat and are satisfied, as you see that God did take care of me, God did prove himself to me in this thing. Like this is what he's trying to do. He's trying to prove himself in the area where you found it difficult to trust him in. Come on, Holy Spirit. And so the Lord is saying in verse 12 of, of Deuteronomy 6, be careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt and out of the land of slavery. And we know that this is the history of humanity. Once the Lord sets us free and, you know, he, we, he prospers us and flourishes us. Then we go off and start serving other gods or we go off forgetting him and serving other gods could be just as simple as not spending enough time with the Lord to actually obtaining an idol again, right? And so God is just checking that right now. He's saying, look, I'm about to bring you into it. You're about to reap what you have sown. You have seed in the ground as the, the song says, right? And it is your time. I think there's a verse in the song where it says like, I know him and now it's time or something to that effect. I know it says, I know him. I should have looked up more of the lyrics, but I'm short on time. So go back and listen to the song and don't worry about what brother William has done. Okay. Don't let that deter you from the word. I'm not sure what he's doing now. I did see some things popping up in the news, so to speak, regarding some things at his church. So let the Lord deal with him, pray for him as you would want somebody to pray for you if you were going through. Okay. But listen to the song listen to the lyrics, get it into your spirit. Okay. Because the Lord is using that song today. He'll use whatever he wants to use. Thank you, Lord. And so verse 13 says, fear the Lord, your God, serve him only and take your oaths in his name. Do not follow other gods, the gods of the people around you for the Lord, your God, who is among you is a jealous God and his anger will burn against you and he will destroy you from the face of the land, which means basically do not worship any other idols because what he is putting into your hands, what he is blessing you with, you're going to squander the blessing if you begin to move astray from him or to leave him. He just doesn't, he's not, he's just saying, don't use me. He's not a means to an end, right? And so if you even feel like your heart is there, I praise God that he led you to this message to correct that. Just repent. Like, you don't just grab onto God because of the benefits of God, right? Like he's, don't use him like that is what he's saying. And even though your heart may not be there, that's what it appears to be, or that's what it is when we get blessed by the Lord. And then we unintentionally sometimes stray away. And when you do find yourself going astray, it just means that you need more word in you, right? Get back into the presence of the Lord. And the Holy Spirit is so gracious. He's so wise. He will always prompt each and every one of us when we're getting off course, right? And so just pay attention to those promptings because what God is about to do in your life for some of you is going to be unbelievable. For some of you, it's going to be what breaks the curse in your family financially, right? And so God is doing it and he is just pleading with us to not forget him. I'm going to go back up to verse three in Deuteronomy six. It says, hear Israel and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly in the land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your ancestors promised you. So in order for you to maintain the blessing, he's just saying, stay obedient, right? Don't go wilding out once you get the blessing, right? Come on, Holy Spirit. And then verse four says, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. And so this is the greatest commandment. And Jesus confirms this when he was asked that question, like, what is the greatest commandment? This is Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven, 37, where Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. 
and all the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. And so the Lord is speaking loud and clear by his spirit today. He's saying you're about to reap everything that you have sown because of your obedience. You have seed in the ground. He's giving you grace. He's giving you favor. He's giving you an inheritance. You're going to walk into this new season of your life effortlessly without toiling, without bondage. So don't go back to it whether it was the job, whether it was the man, the woman, whatever it was, God is saying, trust me, okay? And so this is the song that I heard in my spirit as I was preparing the notes. And it's from 1992 by Eddie and Charles. And it's called, Would I Lie to You? And this is what I heard. Look into my eyes. Can't you see that open wide? Would I lie to you, baby? Would I lie to you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so listen, wait a minute. That beginning, that little, na, na, na. That little goat, that little Billy goat. <laughs> Those of y'all who know the song, you know what I'm talking about. So listen, the Lord is saying, I'm not a man that I shall lie. Like it's not a mirage. I'm going to do what I said I'm going to do. Okay. And I just even sense this now for those of you who aren't sure and you still feel like you need clarity over what God has said or what he hasn't said, take this time to just spend with him so that he can clarify it for you by his spirit. Okay. And so... I pray this word has been a blessing for each and every one of you. Play it back to get it into your spirit. Share it with someone who came to mind. I appreciate each and every one of you for your support. Those of you who are sowing into my life and into the ministry so generously, may the Lord continue to bless you 101,000 fold in the mighty name of Jesus. I love you guys so much with the love of Christ. Most importantly, Jesus loves you and I'll talk to you soon.